We'll skip all the pleasantries and the flag yeah, yeah, salute yeah, until the regular meeting, and we'll skip right to the Asbury Park Board of Education.
I was trying to get your attention, but you won't look at me. You will not look at me. Go ahead. Well, or School District. My name is Sancha Gray. I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction. We want to thank you so much. Uh, to, we are extending our thanks and gratitude to the City Council for giving us this opportunity to just share briefly our very successful summer STEAM with two A's camp program. And we are just so delighted and hopeful that our city developers here will continue the conversations with our engineering students and in our schools. And on behalf of Dr. Repolette and the Board of Education, again, we say thank you. And without further ado, we'll just be moving our things out very quickly as you transition into the rest of your meeting. We certainly can. We'd love that. We'd love to do that. <laughs> Many thanks to all of our teachers and parents who came out to be a part of our presentation tonight. Presented by the city auditor, auditor for a report of our 2016 audit. David. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. So we completed our audit for the year end, uh, December 31st, 2016. We've issued our report timely. It's been filed with the state of New Jersey in accordance with the statute. Our independent auditor's report is an unmodified opinion. That's the highest form of assurance an auditor can give that the financial statements that we delivered are, are prepared in accordance with the regulatory basis of accounting that's prescribed by the Division of Local Government Services. Um, we also have issued a report on internal control over financial reporting and a report on compliance with laws, regulations, and other matters. And we did identify a deficiency in internal control that we considered to be a material weakness in that report. With respect to the finances of the city, the city ended the year um, in, in very good shape. Um, financially speaking, in all areas, uh, including beach, parking, sewer, current fund, which is the main operating fund. So it was a, it was a good year for the, <coughs> for the city and the city um, at this snapshot in time at 1231.16. And for that year uh, then ended, wound up in good shape. I'm not going to go through all the audit recommendations that we made. We did have about 15 or 16 audit recommendations that you'll have to do a corrective action plan on. Um, once that corrective action plan is adopted this evening, um, we'll take it, file it with the rest of the audit uh, papers, and the audit will be complete. So if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to take them. If you want some more information, I can give you that too. Okay. Uh, my basically is going to be uh, general questions. Uh, let's start with the sewer utility. Um, when we, s we were elected in 2013, the sewer utility was not in good shape, and we've been asked many times that we should increase the rates, and we said no, because the tax rate's going up, and we can't increase two at the same time. So. I think this year we're in much better shape with the sewer utility, so could you comment on that? Sure. 
So at the end of 2015, uh, like you said, the sewer utility was not in good shape. If you remember, it had a deficit in operations, and it had a combined total fund balance of $300. <coughs> not good. Contrast that with the position at 1231.16, the authority had a, uh, the sewer utility had a $191,000 fund balance, which is, which is right in line for where it should be. So um, a nice snap back with no rate increase. No rate increase for at least since 2013, which is very good. Thank you. Um, what, what type of report did your firm issue? We issued an unmodified opinion, which is, like I said, our, our, our highest form of assurance that the financial statements are presented in accordance with the, the regulatory basis of accounting <coughs> that the DCA requires. Forgetting the sewer plant and the sewer debt, how is our general debt position? That's in, in really good position. Um, your net debt percentage, which is really how municipalities uh, measure their debt, is 1.642% of equalized valuation. The state has set forth a maximum of 3.5% of equalized valuation before you have to start taking uh, extraordinary steps to issue any additional debt. So 1.642 versus 3.5, I'd say you're in pretty good shape there, too. Okay, and lastly, uh, we've been talking about getting off of the accelerated tax appeal that we do every year to collect the 99.9%, .9%, which also hurts our bond rating. Um, what, what do you think about how soon we can do that? Uh, if you continue the trend um, of, of replenishing your surplus the way you did over the last few years, I think you should be able to start that now. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Any other questions? Anyone else? No? No? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Our next item on the agenda is a presentation by Madison Asbury Retail LLC for renovations to the 4th Avenue Pavilion at 1101 Ocean Avenue.
So no outside. So if somebody said they wanted to get married on the third floor of Fourth Ave Pavilion, you'd say no. no, no. We could potentially host events, but the primary purpose would be for the, the retail tenants, the second floor tenants to have their space that they can utilize. And also, and just saying, if, if you had an entrepreneur on the second floor who wanted to have a product launch, but they could host a small gathering yep. event, but it's not our intent for it to be a commercial food and beverage kind of thing. And, and with that, you know. Other picture of what the roof would look like? Uh, I, uh, I guess look through. No, I do not think we do. Okay. Um, there, was, there wasn't much going on up there. So I mean, we'll are, are the bathrooms going to be where? You got both bathrooms and mechanical on the roof, so I mean, are they both in the middle of the? Yeah, so here's the elevation. Mm -hmm. uh, this is probably the best way to see this. This would be the Ocean Avenue side. Okay. Um, and this is the boardwalk side. So there'd be uh, like a, they kind of have like a double end. side of, of this entrance door or exit door, there would be a, a men's and women's restroom that's kind of flanking it. So when you get up to the very top, it would be kind of like a, a horseshoe that you're walking into or the bathroom would be on each side. And where's the mechanicals? The mechanicals would be in these zoned areas here. There's a there's a line across this plan here, <coughs> which you can also see that line in elevation, which is what would be the mechanical screening, um, which would block the uh, visibility from all the tenants. So what's going to be on the third floor? The railing off, like, like the, the sight line, or the is it set back? Is the railing set back? What you see in the uh, when you're stepping in street view from the boardwalk side, <coughs> you can see the okay. Is this just something that you can just walk up to the roof and look down at? the city itself, or are you going to have, in the future have activities, or maybe put a bar up there, or music or something, and yeah, it's, it's not intended for, it's not intended, that's, that's okay, so, so, be for recreational sites. so, so there's no use, have their lunch up there, or food. okay, so you have tables, and, steps that uh, in, in case in of fire or something of that nature. Yeah, in the, in the event of fire, there would be egress stairs on each side of this. Um, here, let me turn this a little bit. So there'd be egress stairs on each on each side of the building, as well as there's a set of stairs that takes you up there and can take you down and wraps the elevator floor. Thank you. And the cats are safe. <laughs> My question is going to go to the basement. Okay. Right now, <clears throat> that's where the lifeguards have so many square feet. Are they going to continue with the same amount of square footage? It's not our plan to change any of the existing use in the basement other than the expansion in the center of the building of the stair and elevator core. Where are we again? Here's the stair and elevator core. The lifeguard space is currently over there in that bay. This is the only Storm prevention, floor baffles, and so forth. 
So until we find a new home for them, they'll, they'll have the same amount of square footage as they have now. Our intent is to change any of the current uses. Okay, there. thanks. Questions? Nothing. You were at the mm -hmm. TRC, so. I, I do have a comment. Um, as far as the building, that I like it. But I do have a question. Since in light of what you've heard this happened, <laughs> what they'd like to see. Um, do you have any plans for doing anything on the boardwalk for families, for, for moderate income families and not just high end retail and office space? Well, we, we do have the splash park, we do have mini golf, we do have the food containers that allow affordable food options. Um, we have been evaluating uh, amusement rides for some of the green spaces, but we have found that it's quite an economic model that makes sense. Any other questions on this project or anything else? Any other comments you guys would like to make? Huh? Okay. Thank so you. The, the next step is for the mayor and council to adopt a resolution providing your conceptual approval of the proposed project and referring the matter to the planning board. It's my understanding that Redevelopment Council will be preparing that resolution and that it will be placed on the next council agenda for your consideration. Correct. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You didn't ask your question. Can we use the roof? One last question, and I apologize. As much as it's not the intended use at this point to use the roof as a, I'm gonna say a, another area for a bar or something like that, or parties, if that becomes the use, is no big deal and you'd have to transfer a liquor license which is no big deal but but if that becomes but, but if that becomes if that becomes the purpose of that third floor which I think well, I don't know where Michelle is but, but I think you're gonna need a variance for if that does become the purpose can we work out some type of deal like we did with the uh, Arthur Pryor Pavilion where the city gets so many days a year changed your mind and it became a more com a more commercial use of the space. Oh yeah, I mean I think we that's a door we could keep open in the future and yeah, I think it could be resolved in public space. So okay. are you saying that you will not be renting out the top floor? Well again, we would be particular point? It, for recreational, you know, it would be if somebody is having an event not for having the public coming in off the on the boardwalk and buying drinks and right. Kevin, will that space be accessible to the general public? Anybody could just go up to the roof? No. Top. You enter into the office lobby where you have a security point to then go up further. So you have to check in through the reception to be allowed in further. So the rooftop 
pretty much belongs to the offices? To the tenants of the building. And there's a key fob system to gain access to restrooms, you know, to how the building is certainly secure. And then you have the fob to have access and then track who's in which space is being used. Just similar to any office building now, you have a key access that would allow you into core restrooms, would allow you into certain stairwells. It's the same way that you can access. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to city manager's report of issues raised at prior council meetings. Special event applications. Alicia. Yeah, thank you. Council, the first application before you is from the center, and they're requesting to do a bike ride on September 23rd. Next is the Boys Club annual back to school community celebration on August 25th, and they're requesting to close uh, Monroe at Wynn and uh, Prospect at Monroe. Bond Street is requesting to do their third annual block. Um, Bond Street block party on September 16th. They will be closing the 200 block of Bond Street. Next is the Greek Orthodox Holy Cross celebration on September 17th. They will be using Fifth Avenue Beach as well as Bradley Park. Rally on the boards would be a um, rally to commemorate the fifth year anniversary of Sandy as well as uh, to highlight climate change. I'm requesting that the council just approve the date for this, contingent on approval um, by the special events committee of the speakers. Next we have two weddings, one on August 25th, the other on September 9th. And lastly is the Halloween tutu run um, on October 28th. Are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Review of agenda items for this evening's meeting. Resolution 2017-251 is a special event applications that we just heard. Resolution 2017-252, I'd like you to table um, until the next meeting. Uh, there's a couple properties that we might be adding to this list. Um, so the resolution you see before you doesn't have the addresses, but we do have, but there's a couple more that are going to come in. Um, resolution 2017-253 is the post office went to tax sale in 2013. Someone tried to foreclose on it. We can't foreclose on federal land, so we have to get rid of that um, tax cert. Resolution 2017-254 is the amending the temporary budget. Resolution 20. 255 is the payment of bills. Resolution 256 is accepting the municipal audit, which you just heard um, from Mr. Kaplan a review of. And resolution 257 adopts the corrective action plan for said audit finding. Um, resolution 258 and 260 um, are for what is commonly referred to as the, as has been past referred to as the um, turf club, which is interface lot. 258 authorizes us to apply for a DEP grant for 75% of the cost of $310,000 for resolution 260. This is to remove uh, impacted and contaminated soil that's been found on, on the parcel. We yeah. currently own it. So, quite, and I didn't get a chance to call you about it. So the city is responsible for the impacted soil or the Michaels group? Uh, this is interface. This is interface. interface. Um, the agreement from it, that has been passed by the city council and signed by interface. The city, as we still own the property, is the applicant. 
because we can receive a 75% reimbursement from QVC. And subsequently, in the developer's agreement, there's a credit of $50,000 towards us for the cost of this. So there is no cost to the city for this cleanup. Okay. If Interface had done it, then they would have had to spend the $300,000 okay. on their own. How long does it take us to get that money from DEP? A couple months. The project, we should have it done by the end of the fiscal year. The, the whole kit and caboodle. Okay. Um, I asked Mr. Raffetto to start drafting the contract. He should have it to me tomorrow or Friday. Um, after that, Ambient Group is going to take about a month to do this whole work. Um, interface schedule is to have foundations in by November so they can work through the okay. winter. Good. We already authorized the application for DEP. The second we award and sign the contracts, we submit it to DEP. So we okay. are moving quickly on these things. We're trying to be a step ahead of it. Okay. Uh, resolution 2017-259 was is for the fire department uniform. As per the existing fire department contract, each officer receives $900 in a clothing allowance every year. Uh, the current contract has sunset. We put it out to bid. There was one respondent, uh, myself and Mr. Ketty, as fire chief, reviewed the, the pricing. Uh, the pricing is reasonable, realistically the same as, as past years, but it doesn't make a difference because for the contract, they get a $900 clothing allowance. Um, so we're recommending a ward to that. Um, resolution. Mike, before you go on, how often do they get uniforms? Uh, they and when the last time the police department got new uniforms? The uniforms are part of their clothing allowance. They're required to purchase A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and whatever is left over they, they can use for other items. Um, so it's just dependent on what their uniforms or clothing look like. And they're responsible for their uniforms. They get $900 a year? Fire department gets $900. Um, 261 and 262 is appointing members to the Environmental Shade Tree Commission and Wesley Lake. Uh, during the council meeting, the clerk will read the name. Um, that completes the resolutions. And we have the second reading of the easement, which has been discussed previously. Um, I believe their attorney is here. I think he's walking past me. And, and is there any questions on that? The um, 2017-36 ordinance, what is that? What is the C speed trailer? Do you know what capital surplus is? Because that's a little different than a regular ordinance. Yeah. Um, so we have some capital surplus money available. And okay. what I like to do with capital surplus money is to purchase items that we normally wouldn't purchase in the general everyday items. Um, the speed trailer, we're down to one. The other one has been damaged up, up beyond repair. And it's the thing that measures car speeds, right. volume. Um, we're looking at one, possibly two. I think we can get two, but it just depends on the software. Um, the reason why we need another is obviously one broke. But once we finish roads, especially Fort and Sunset, they turn into freeways. So we would like to at least have some sort of deterrence out there. Um, that's why I would like to get two. Okay. Um, even if there's a cheaper one that you can still do the data measurement with so we can deploy three at a time. Um, we use these all the time there throughout the city, but we're down to one. And the other one is just, they're old and they need to go. So we have some additional money. Um, with that, there's equipment for the fire department that is looked at, and the mechanics would like some, some compression equipment to be able to fix tires. And oh, some tools. Nice, yeah. You'll have that full list next meeting when this is adopted, authorized for purpose. Okay, great. Thank you. <coughs> Nothing else. We'll move on to matters by City Council. Um, I have nothing. Actually, you know what? There's going to be a 
cleanup at Sunset Lake on uh, Saturday at 9 o'clock. If anyone's interested in coming to help out, we would appreciate all hands. Um, I would just like to commend and thank the police department, the recreation department, and everybody that worked for National Night Out. It was wonderful. It was a great night for the families, for our kids, with the things that you added this year, the Woman, you took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> I like to thank each and every one of you. And in our audience, we have two people that worked 20 years with the summer youth. Would you just please stand up for a minute, you, uh, Mr. Jordan and Mrs. Donna? Please, thank you. <laughs> 20 years working with the kids. Lisa, nice job putting it together, and also, Mr. Good job. Um, so I just have a brief, uh, the former chair of APTV and um, the former executive director and founder of SICA, SICA, which was an art program starting in Long Branch and then came to Esbury Park, passed away two nights ago, Doug Ferrari. So um, he was a huge lover of the arts and um, a staple in Esbury Park. So we just want to send our condolences to his sister and family. Um, we're, we're, he was a, a great person, and, and we're, we're, sorry, we're sorry to have lost him. Can you give me my two-week update on the road projects? We've encountered some problems on Sunset. Um, we found that there was copious amounts of concrete underground and some additional sewer laterals that mapped no, nowhere. Um, the contractor looks like he's going to be requesting an extension. Uh, I haven't. I didn't have a chance today to speak to the engineer about trying to just maneuver some of the scheduling around to make sure that we can get the most important aspects paved before the winter strikes. Um, but there is going to be a delay on sunset. It looks like from what some of the infrastructure that once you open the road, we found stuff that well, no one knew was there. But everything else. Michael, was there any connection to the road work on Sunset and the uh, muddy muddy water now in, in Sunset Park? Uh, no, we don't believe so. Um, the engineer spoke to her, his, her inspector. Uh, the inspector said during the work that they were doing, they had the silt grates up on the catch basin. Uh, they're not up permanently. They've been picking them up. Um, we spoke to, uh, Christine spoke to them just to make sure that they're up until Jay was going to talk to the contractor. Um, the consensus was it was probably just heavy rain. There's, there's no depth there, um, right. so I haven't been out there yet to see if, if there if it's gone down. But we think it's more of the rain. And we're going to keep looking at it. Uh, the engineers on it, making sure that it's not coming down from there. But we didn't believe it was. But okay. we'll do what we can to make sure it's not that. Thank you, Mike. Do we have security here tonight? I don't know. There was a police call right before the meeting started, so I don't know if they had to go there. So, young man back there choking, and, and uh, well, he's just jumping up and down with his chest. And what was, is he okay? <laughs> he's okay. Seems a bit. <laughs> that answer that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing I have, August 19th and August 26th, there's two great events. One is at uh, Springwood Avenue and Springwood Avenue Park on the 19th, and then on the 26th at the Hammery Basketball Courts, and two great events coming up for the children going back to school and all types of handouts at both events. The uh, Mayor's Wellness Committee will be in attendance seems like I go to all these things that I'm gaining weight instead of losing weight, but uh, <laughs> so this committee may not be together too much longer. 
And that's all I have. Thank you. Matters by the city manager? None at this time. Matters by the city attorney? Nothing from me at this time either. All right, we'll close workshop and we'll move on to our regular meeting. And I'll do the roll call. Councilwoman Chapman. Here. Councilmember Clayton. Here. Councilmember Kendall. Present. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Here. Mayor Moore. Yes. Everyone, please rise for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection, please. Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> it's too early. You are going to war. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coast, and the Star Ledger on January 3, 2017, and posted on a bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. At this time, can I have a motion to open the meeting to the public, please? Move it. Second. Second. Anybody wishing to speak before the uh, for public comment, please state your name and address for the record. And each member of the public has three minutes to speak. Mike, you have to stand up, sir. I'll just wait after him. You can stand up over there. Good evening. My name is Danny McKee. I live at 508 7th Avenue. I had a couple things. First, I wanted to thank. Uh, the Recreation Department, Leisha Floyd, Mr. Jordan, and many of the other staff that put on a tremendous recreation program. My granddaughter went to this uh, program this year, and every day she came home with new adventures, and it was great. I think all the kids had a great time. So thank you very much to the city for putting on this great program for the kids. I also wanted to thank the Recreation Department and the city for the tremendous support of the Little League. Um, I hope that you shared the uh, postcards that you got with your fellow council members. Um, and um, I can't tell you what an impact it has on our kids to uh, be able to go away outside of Asbury Park uh, for a week of summer camp. Um, we're also, we have a little money left over. We're taking them up to Williamsport to the, to the World Series on um, the 19th. And then hopefully we're going to zip down to South Carolina and watch this eclipse. So uh, we're going to take probably eight kids uh, down there for that too. So my belief is anytime you can uh, expose the kids to something new and exciting outside of the city. I mean, I love the city. Don't get me wrong. But, but you know, there's a lot, a lot uh, to this big world. and. Uh, I think it's a good thing to expose our kids as much as possible to that. So thank you very much. We have a little token of our appreciation for the city council. Yes, yes, come on. <laughs> this is uh, some homemade jam that we made. Uh, the kids helped to make it, and they also helped pick the berries and the cherries. The cherries are from Neptune. The blackberries are from right here in Asbury Park. And uh, what else we got here? Black, ra black raspberries we pick in, in uh, Pennsylvania on the way home from summer camp, so. Yeah. <coughs> we, we can never thank Danny enough for what he's done throughout the years with Asbury Park Little League. Uh, so as much as he's given us something, I'm going to ask everybody to clap for Danny and a little bit. Stay after the public participation. Leisha, Janice, do, do 
you're going to do a presentation about the summer camp. Oh, and again, Danny, thank you for all you do. And anybody looking to buy a great AP hat, Danny, you have any left? Okay. <laughs> Where can they purchase them at? Okay, good. But everybody's looking for an AP hat, and he has the best ones. Thank you. Warner? Everybody's so kind. That's scary. Good evening, uh, City Council. I'm Dalian Hoover. Uh, I currently live on 404 Fifth Avenue. Uh, kind of like frustrated what's happening over there with the parking. I uh, got a letter in the mail that's informed us that <clears throat> we're going to have to pay to park where we live at. And, you know, that didn't sit well, so I said, okay, uh, uh, I will take that, right? So today I get up and I go to get the permit that <clears throat> cost me 210 bucks. So, yeah, 210 bucks for two cars that I have, one for me and one for my wife. And... Uh, so okay, so I gotta pay 210 bucks to, to park where I live at. So that's right there is, you know, eating at me. And then I go in, I get my permits, and it says for 2017. So I said, well, is this parking permit for a whole year? And he informs me that no, it's only for the rest of this year. So I'm saying, you're gonna charge me 210 bucks for four months, and I gotta renew my permit for 2018. So that seems highly unfair to me that I have to pay a whole year's worth of permits for four months. So I'm just, I mean, I'm, I'm frustrated about that. I have to pay for something that you just installed at the end of August, and yet I have to pay for a whole year. Seems highly unfair. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody help me I out with that? Um, from my understanding, this is something that the, the parking committee has gone back and forth with about prorating. Um, I've spoken with the transportation planner. We don't, transportation manager, Mike Manzella, we don't have a full software to track things yet. Um, it's, we should be implementing something soon. We, we authorized, the council authorized a pilot program for the, the pilots, for the parking permits themselves. Um, it's something that we know we need to address. It's just how do we can better management and then the ordinance needs to be changed. Um, so it's still a two or three month process of getting the ordinance changed once we can get everything the ducks in row. But I'm emailing the, the transportation manager now, um, telling him to speed up the process of looking at prorating by me tomorrow so I can give him a, an update of what you said. It's something we know we need, needs, something has to be addressed, it's just how to address it. So, so what you basically said was what? Right now you have to pay what you have to pay because that's what the ordinance says. When the ordinance was adopted, nobody considered what you're going through. So the ordinance reads, if you buy it in January, if you buy it in July, or if you buy it in September, you pay the full rate. We realize that's a mistake. We cannot break an ordinance. We cannot break a law to fix a mistake. We can change the ordinance to fix that mistake, and that's what we're in the process of doing. But what frustrates me, it was just instituted this month. So I'm like, nine months, it was not even there. It was free parking. So you institute something in August, and you want me to pay for the nine months that it wasn't even there. I mean, that's not fair. That's not fair. Totally understand what you're saying, and we're totally trying well, to cor correct it. I understand, but is anybody going to do anything about it? That's all I want to know. We're trying to correct it. We, we just can't. It's like if somebody was given a parking ticket. We just can't rip it up. We have to do everything legally. The ordinance was written without thinking about this. It was a mistake. It's in the process of being fixed. And that's that's it in a nutshell. So meanwhile, I have to pay for this too. Is that right? Yes, sir. So if we fix the ordinance, would you get a refund? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. No. I mean, it is 
nothing. Can we get a credit towards next year? Don't make it worse. Just leave it alone. Yeah, it's okay. 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 Ok
Did we get the last gentleman seen? Yes. And Dalen Hoover. Yeah, okay. Hoover. Can can you have Manzel get in touch with him tomorrow? Okay. And just I to, I email Manzel address. Okay, but just to, he said he gave us his address. So mm -hmm. just a direct response to him. I understand his frustration. It's just our hands are tied until we fix it. So if Manzel reaches out to him, it may help a little bit. Sylvia? Hi, um, Sylvia, Sylvia, the director for the Chamber of Commerce, um, who are mayor council. Um, I'm coming up on my first year um, running the chamber here, and I just wanted to come and make uh, one comment. I've had an opportunity to work with um, your police department, your fire department, um, Department of Public Works an awful lot, and certainly your central administration team, and I can't commend all of them enough. Um, responsive and um, efficient, have helped me through so many of our events here. Um, and you yourselves, very boots on the ground, you've been um, very uh, available to me by text and, and answering questions um, that I've had. So I want to thank you all for everything that you've done to help the chamber, try to help the community. Um, and also, uh, in that vein, um, we have our Oyster Fest, which is coming up on September 8th, 9th, and 10th. Uh, Councilwoman Chapman's been helping to guide me through a lot of that. Um, the 8th is community night, um, and it's free admission for everybody. Part of our mission with the Oyster Fest is fundraising for our, non our uh, nonprofit charity partner, who has been named this year's CARC, which is uh, Community Affairs and Resource. Uh, center and also we'll be raising funds for our new uh, scholarship program for our high school students. So I wanted to thank you all for um, helping my make my job a lot easier. Thank okay. you. Before you go away, wait a second. And don't you have a meet and greet coming up? Yes, we okay, do. Okay, let's thank get that you. plug See? in. See, that's <laughs> what I'm <Okay>. talking about. <laughs> you make me look so much better. Yes, August 16th, which is next Wednesday. It's a joint event with the Ocean Township Chamber of Commerce at Anchors Bend between 6 and 8 p.m. Looking forward to seeing everybody at Anchors Bend. Thank you. Hi, uh, Rita Morano, 8th Avenue. I didn't want to talk about this, but doesn't that ordinance that you passed, that the man paid $210 for, isn't that for a whole year? Doesn't it say that in there? No. Well, I mean, I read it, but I didn't read it that closely. I mean, I, you know, you talk about the pl uh, the parking authority, the, the committee, like it's somebody official. That's wrong. He shouldn't have to pay from August to December 200 and something dollars. That's a lot of money to park in front of his house. That should be corrected, and he should get reimbursed. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the $17,000 that we have to pay back to the post office. Since when did we tax the tax office, a federal building? What was that about from 2013? Keep that's on a going. Huh? Keep on going, and then we'll answer all your questions. Okay, that's number two. And I want to know if we had to pay interest on that money. And number three is I hear they have a widescreen TV in public works. I want to know if that's true. I mean, I, I don't know why they would have a widescreen TV there, but maybe somebody can give me an answer on that. And the other thing is, the parking authority now has a lot of money. Every time there's that box truck, I hate to keep talking about it, it was there again this weekend. It's called Party Corner, and they're in Shrewsbury. Why can't you tow that truck? There has to be a way you could tow it and put it somewhere. We're tired of seeing it on 8th Avenue. There's two of them. I mean, this is the fourth time I've had to talk about a truck that shouldn't even be on the street. It's not right. A big truck. And then there's another one now, Trinity. They do solo panels. They have ladders all over the truck. That shouldn't be there. That's there every night. It's not as big as the others, but it's big. So, okay, those are my four questions. Hello? 
Okay, I want to. I want to. Mike, Michael's texting somebody. I want to see if he wants to answer. Michael the always texts us while we're having a, a con council meeting. Because he gets I'm stuff. Emailing Kelso to tell him that you're stuff complaining. done. He's getting stuff done as you speak. I just oh, sent an yeah, email right. to Kels. Like nobody else had to do it. No other city manager. Well, maybe that's why nothing in got done. In hundred years. Well, I'm not that old. Technology, Ooh. Rita. I don't care. It's not right. He's 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 helping answer your questions before. He could wait till tomorrow morning and make a phone call at nine o'clock, or else he could do it right now and start the ball rolling to solve your questions. And I, I think he's doing the right. Still didn't give me a answer? beach report or a parking report. Read it. We're going to answer your four questions. Okay. Concerning the vehicles, I just emailed uh, Acting Chief Kelso to make sure that the enforcement is there. The issue with vehicle size is we don't have an approved tower that has a tow truck to lift that sort of vehicle. So we've been talking internally about what we need to do to fix that. We probably have to go back out to bid to amend the towing contract, but that in involves rewriting the bid spec. But um, you can ticket, right? You can still and they can ticket, ticket. Yes. yes. But the towing is another issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The TV screen in Public Works has been there for about 17 or 18 months. It is for training purposes and for emergency management purposes. Um, they do webinars there. They, they watch the weather reports during snowstorms there. It is for general operations and is common across every municipality in the country for certain um, departments to have that sort of availability. There's TVs in the police department to watch the news in case something is happening. It's common to have that sort of equipment. Um, <coughs> the post office in 2013, the post office did not pay a sewer bill, not a tax bill, a sewer bill. Um, it went to tax sale legally. Um, it should have been pulled by the tax collector as a federal property. It wasn't. A private person, as their right, bought the, the bought the uh, past due amount. They paid the subsequent taxes. Everything is being refunded back to this person. Um, the cost to the city, as if you read the resolution, is based upon a, a federal statute of 0.25 percent. This has cost the city fifty-four dollars. It's not seventeen thousand. Is that the what's that been paid? This was done in 2013. Someone tried to foreclose on the post office, and the federal government is like, what are you doing? You can't. And then we find out that they sold a tax sale in 2013, four years ago. It cost us $54. Mm -hmm. okay. What was the fourth thing? That was it. The first one. Uh, first one. That was about the- uh, The first one you did was- The parking you, fee. Yes, that was already addressed. I know it was already addressed, but it's not right. You should think about that again. We're, we're, we're trying to correct it as soon well, as possible. He should be reimbursed for, four, for the rest of the time. But we cannot just- You don't just need the money anymore, huh? We, uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna quote you on that next time you say our taxes are too high. We don't need the money anymore. Okay, well, you don't need a taxpayer's money, and you get enough of it. This is extra. It's on the street. The street is a public street, right? Isn't it public? No? Yes, it's a street. It's a street. Yes. And you're charging. Yes. No. Same as Cookman, same as Summerfield, same as every other street. We're talking about a residential neighborhood. And so is Cookman, and so is Summerfield, and so is first, second, third, seventh, eighth. Next, please. Alicia Simmons, Sewell Avenue, Asbury Park. Um, I am here tonight um, to speak about, well, first, um, yesterday, um, some of the committees. I, after sitting in a lot of these meetings and sitting in some of these committees, as a person from the community, I think that there needs to be some kind of in-service as of the committee people who sit at these seats on the exact task of their task as being part of different committees, as parking committees, zoning boards, and different other um, city functioning um, parts of this municipality. 
um, sitting here after hours and listening to your own lawyers as of committees tell them that that's out of the scope of their jobs after sitting in some of these committees. I know there's a lot of people that are well-trained, but some of the newer people are not. And it is offensive and um, a huge um, task for people to sit in hours, six hours of testimony, when about five and a half hours of it was legitimate testimony. Um, and sitting other meetings where you sit there and another four hours and it's only about 20 minutes of legitimate testimony. I don't know how exactly the process goes, but I think that there should be some kind of mandatory um, classing, training, um, to sit back and to discover what your job is and to function in a um, adequate um, manner. Last night we sat in um, one of uh, three or four meetings uh, for a zoning board. Um, listening to different defenses, different testimonies, and to come to a terms where they're about to expire their time um, as a board. So they're about to lose power as a board because of hours and hours of testimony that really had nothing to the point or the basis of their task. That creates more bureaucracy and that creates um, a disconnect from the community who sat in these meetings, who get disenfranchised and um, upset about the things that happen to happen at these meetings. Um, again, um, this was specifically the zoning board I've sat in, and they're literally on the cusp of losing their legal standing because of the fact of pushing back meetings, sitting through hours and hours of testimony. So they're about to set a forth a default, which I don't mind a default actually, but, they're, but I also mind when we give away power. I think that's a huge problem when we give away our power as a municipality. So on that manner, I'm asking the board to maybe give some end services to these things so they know exactly their scope and they can push it forward in, um, in the future. Oh, that's me, I'm sorry, I'm on the phone. That's it. Okay, and I'm glad, because at the beginning I didn't have a clue what you were talking about, but now I do. The, the, the zoning board and the planning board are autonomous agencies that we have no say over whatsoever. And that's state law. We cannot get involved. And <coughs> because there's an ongoing rift between at the zoning board and it hasn't been solved yet, I have no intention on commenting on it and I have no right on commenting on it. It's, it's, it's not a, about what they're talking about. It, but it's an autonomous agency. If you have a problem with the zoning board, you have to go address that. We appoint them, and then after that, we cannot tell them what to do. There are training classes. I'm on the planning board. I had to go to Brookdale and go to training classes, and hopefully everybody on the zoning board did. But be besides that, we cannot tell the zoning board what to do. Michael, uh, correct me I, if I'm I wrong. think what, what Felicia is saying is, is, is well, she, I think she's incorrect in what she's saying, is that, that there's a time limit to hear an application that there is no time limit. It can go on for months and months. The, the board loses no power if there's continuances because the board has the right to do that continuance. There was a Moss case in Bridgewater that went on for four or five years. The, it's just because something takes three months doesn't mean that the board loses any power. They have that power to, to continue a hearing. Everyone gets heard. All the testimony gets heard. It's the way that the applicant sets up an appeal if they think there's going to be appeal and the board has to protect the board's interests by asking questions also. So there's no time limit. It can go <coughs> on for, for months. Last night at the, the zoning board meeting, the discussion just came from the lawyer of um, the city who sat up there and said that they're about to lose their, from an application time to the time that they should rightfully heard, and those decisions are going, there's 180 days. This just came from your lawyer at, last night. What State law. 
what uh, what happened? I'm sorry to cut you off, but I didn't want to lose my train of thought on that. What the the question was last night is when was the application submitted to meet the legal guidelines of the 120 days? You need to hear an application. Um, quite honestly, we've received some correspondence from attorneys on both sides stating what is the date of that the application was deemed complete. I can't get too much into that. And that's where that's coming from. It's a legal question that's born in case law that Fred and I have already had discussions on because we have to pay those bills. Yeah. And this relevancy of the testimony is testimony that doesn't the, they're not uh, not our lawyer not our lawyer the zoning board lawyer and in order to sit on a zoning or planning board, as the mayor mentioned, you have to take a, a mandatory class before you're allowed to vote. So they won't sit there unless they have the class, and that paperwork is required and it's filed with us. So any new member has to do it. I haven't taken the class recently, so if I was appointed by the mayor to sit on, the, on his spot, I would have to go take the class. So they have to take a class on just the basics of it. It's a one-time class, and I'll be very honest with you. It's something that I wish we could do more and get more of the volunteers interested in. There's two parts of it. One, they're volunteers, and it's difficult to get them to class and because people have lives. And two, there's a cost to it. And we don't have the budgetary reason ability right now to start sending all our board members, all our volunteers to classes because it's expensive. A normal class is 95 to 150 bucks a pop. You have 10 people on a board, we're dropping a grand. And we have a lot of boards and commissions. So as we, as we continue to improve financially, uh, the auditor was here earlier, that's something that I definitely want to, to start implementing and working with the boards and commissions to do it. We just don't have enough money yet. Um, we've also asked numerous towns around, um, especially with something that I know that's dear to you, affordable housing. Since there's a bunch of new people in the area, we've actually asked a lot of the surrounding towns, do you want to share the cost of these things? So myself and other managers and administrators have had those discussions. It's just finding a time where we can get a group of people together. So we're looking at this from the efficiency side. I, I'm a big fan of training, and I want all the boards and commissions to be trained and be better at their jobs, but it comes down to the dollars and cents at the end of the day and time. I don't disagree with you. And it's also efficiency. We're a member, yes. We are a very active member in the League of Municipalities. I think four of the five council members registered today to go. Um, the league staff has been here for issues. Uh, they were here sitting with us on Airbnb. I have personal friends on the league staff, and I sit on the league's legislative committee for land use and economic development. So anytime that there's land use laws, I'm one of the people that reviews it, um, along with our redevelopment council. Jennifer Credidio and I both sit on those committees. So we're active in those sort of activities with the league. I'm speaking this year. I believe Hannah's speaking this year. And the mayor was asked to um, MC an event. So we're very active in those organizations because it's good for us. Thank you. Well, on a good note, my name is BB Bennett, and um, I no longer reside in Asbury Park. I am, um, I was a lifetime resident, but due to Habitat for Humanity, who I had my house built through 13 years ago, I reside in Neptune, but I do teach at Barack Obama as well. And I just wanted to thank the city of Asbury Park for um, allowing me to have the Universal African Festival this past Saturday, which was, um, which was um, amazing. Um, we had almost a thousand people come out and we knew that by, they were, doing those little tickers, the counters. And um, again, this couldn't have been possible without you guys and Alicia Floyd. I thank you. We grew up together and, and I appreciate you. All right, and um, I hope to see you guys next year. We already locked in that date. So first week in um, August it will be. 
happening again. And hopefully y'all have the city backing me like the Oyster Fest and all that other great stuff. Cause I did come out of pocket and um, I decided that, you know, I was gonna do this and I, I would receive everything I put out back to me. And, and in that case I did. And um, again, thank you. And I, I also have another question. The artwork that I see like on the board world, war, walk, pardon so, boardwalk as well as um, different places in the area. Who is responsible for that? Because I would love to see some artwork that reflects myself and um, you know other people of color. So I was just curious about that. It's not at all the city. I wish I could say it was, but it isn't. It's um, a project called the Wooden Walls Project. Mm -hmm. So it's run by Parlor Gallery and Madison Marquette, and they, um, you know, it's their land that they're putting these murals up on. Okay. If you're talking about the waterfront ones specifically, in the and mm -hmm. on the casino, yeah, it's not the city. It's um, uh, Parlor Gallery and Madison Marquette. Okay. So, with that being said, does the city have properties that they would be interested in allowing? Um, artists from this area to adorn their walls with some of their art. Again, that reflects the people who have been here for three and four generations. You know, it, it just, it's kind of heartening to, to, to see, disheartening, pardon so When you, you look around and you only see the images of people who don't look like you, when this is a very diverse town, you know, so I, I so the city does have a uh, mural art committee that, it, listen, if you can, if the, I, I'm not sure if the city has, has the land to provide this for you, but if you can find land and an artist, mm -hmm. you go to the mural art committee and, and I don't know that they've ever, ever rejected an application or if they do, it's very, very rarely. Okay. Um, and, and yeah, I think, I think we would love to see murals of all types throughout the city. I, I think both the council and the mural committee would be enthusiastic about that. Clearly Rita is not, but yeah. I think the mural committee and the saying? city is enthusiastic. Rita, you don't want Ms. Bennett, but yeah. Bradley's turning in his grave. Okay. <laughs> all right, so, and uh, Mr. Moore, Mayor Moore, thank you. Thank you for attending too, because I, on Saturday, that w it was a pleasure to meet you. Um, I'm just gonna reel back to that, and I'm gonna say thank you to everybody, and y'all have a good uh, night. I wasn't the only council person there, there was others, and- See, I, I, you were the only one that I met. Okay, So with that being said, I've got to thank you for the others who attended. I gotta thank you, and I've gotta tell you, and I've told Leisha, and I've told other people, your event was spectacular. Your event was laid out and planned like you had been and doing that was it seven for weeks. 10 years. <laughs> it was the most organized first year event I've ever seen in my life. So you Thank did a you. fantastic job and it was a great crowd. The weather cooperated, it looked like rain, it didn't rain. Uh, we can't wait to have you back next year. It was I fantastic. appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. Check me in the classroom too. No. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening. It's my first time ever at a council meeting ever in my life, at, and I'm 53, so uh, <laughs> I don't mean to wait so long. My name is Bill Brown. I've been here in the city of Asbury Park since 2000, and I want to thank you for marrying me. You married me last year to my lovely wife, uh, Mayor Moore, and Mr. Jesse, thank you for uh, giving me a shout out at the uh, Rick and the Brown show. I, uh, I'm just here to, uh, Say I love Asbury Park. It's, 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 I'm from Red Bank originally from the 70s, but it's a great place. And I just wanted to um, see what I can do as a small business owner. I'm not just a singer, but I'm a promoter, event planner. And I would love to do something very uh, lovely and diverse fundraisers for uh, police, fire, first aid. You know, um, I'm very huma humane and um, Reach out to me if you guys need a fundraiser. I have a lot of celebrities from Philadelphia and New York to come down and, or just local entertainers. Uh, we love to give back. And um, that's all I wanted to say. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll definitely be reaching out to you next April at the Mayor's Rodeo for Recreation. <laughs> so <laughs> be prepared. Thank you. Motion to close, Jeff. Move, Move it. Second. Now it's time. <laughs> Presentation by our recreation department.
And, and whatever we see tonight is going to be fantastic, but you're going to see the tip of the iceberg. I tell everybody we have the best recreation department and summer's camp in Monmouth and Ocean County. I, I don't think I'm doing it service. It may be in the state as far as bang for the buck, as far as the counselors and the great job they do. Explain to everybody who you are. I, we all know you. I am the coordinator for summer recreation. I also do a lot during the winter with the, um, the students with the mentoring program. Um, I, I feel like I'm kind of the bridge between our um, public schools and the city because I, I work on two levels. I'm, I've been in the school district for 25 years and I've been working with the city for 23 years. So it's been a nice blend um, for the partnership and that's where I see the biggest um, gains this year because we're actually working together. Um, one thing I said to um, Leisha one day was that um, when we were working as um, individual groups we were islands, but now that we're working together we are a community and um, that's so important because the students um, benefit and that's what I'm really about, I'm about the kids. Um, this year, we kind of partnered with the um, East Side, and that was amazing. Because some of our kids had never like been on the East Side to experience hot sand or the pink elephant, I mean, things like that. I mean, and they were, the merchants were so um, warm and accepting to our children. And I mean, some of the pictures you would even see them tying a shoe or helping them spell their name, like stuff like that. And that's what our kids need. They need to know that um, there is life on the other side of town. So we, I, I really enjoyed that, and um, hopefully we can keep that going and make it even better next year. I mean, every year I look forward to be better. So always look for new things. So pictures worth a thousand words. We do have a short video that really just encompasses the summer. We start our video with um, <coughs> another program that we did is we have 35 youth visits. Yeah, can't see. Oh, okay. yeah about 30 yeah. youth from Asbury Park High School have jobs at Six Flags. The issue, I think I mentioned this previously, the issue was getting the kids to and from um, Six Flags. So recreation, through the mayor's rodeo for recreation, was able to provide funding for a bus to get the kids to and from camp. So we have 30 of our kids who are gainfully employed, and that's where our video starts with them. This is our second year doing it, and they are doing a
That's summer camp in a nutshell. <laughs> I did forget to mention is that we also hired 12 Asbury Park youth as junior counselors. So they were also employed. So the vote for recreation is so important because that's how we make this happen. So thank I, you. I Mary see Council. a lot of people in this room that last April made that happen. And I'm sure they're going to pony up again. Pony up? Hey, pony, <laughs> pony up again uh, next April. And like I say, we do it every other year. And we will always find the money to fund recreation. And I cannot thank you two, your staff, or, and all the other counselors enough. It, it is the best in the state of New Jersey, and you go above board. So thank you. How many years have I known you guys? <laughs> who told you to go back and become a teacher? Well, we go back further than Who told you? I, I knew her before she was a school teacher and said, you're wasting your time. Go back and get your degree and become a school teacher. And now she's a great teacher. And all of this could not be done without the cooperation of the Board of Education. So it's a joint effort. Thank you. Now you can go home because the rest is all boring. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we'll move on to minutes. We have three sets of minutes this evening. Executive session minutes of July 26, workshop minute of July 26, and regular uh, meeting minutes from July 26. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We have two items on a consent agenda as we pulled 2017-252. So the two items on a consent is 2017-251 special event applications and sorry. And the second um, item on the application Resolution authorizing cancellation and refund of tax sales certificate due to erroneously sold to Federal Post Office Block 2507, Lot 1. Can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. On to individual resolutions. Resolution 2017-254, resolution amending a temporary budget appropriations for the 2017 budget. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-255, resolution authorizing the payment of bills. Councilmember Chapman abstains from purchase order 17-01527 and 17-02077. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-256. Resolution accepting the 2007, I'm sorry, 2016 municipal audit. Have a motion to approve the audit, the acceptance of the audit, please. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-257, resolution adopting corrective action plan in response to the recommendation contained in the 2016 report of audit. Can I have a motion to approve this resolution, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-258, resolution supporting potential brownfield remediation at 1130 to 1156 Springwood Avenue. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Move it. Second. Second. <laughs> Any comments or questions? 
Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-259, award a contract to provide fire department uniforms. Can I have a motion to approve the resolution, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Staying. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-260, award a contract to Amian Group for impact soil removal. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-261, authorizing appointments to the Environmental Shade Tree Commission. The following members are being recommended for appointment for this evening. Tom Kulsa with a term expiring December 31st, 2017, and Roy Helfrich, who would be an alternate two with a term expiring December 31st, 2020. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-262, resolution appointing members to the Wesley Lake Commission. The following members are being recommended for appointment for the term expiring 12-31-2019. Council Member Chapman as the City Representative. Gail Rosewater, member to be appointed by the City Council. T. Lazinski, who's also a member being appointed by the City Council. And William McClave, who is the Superintendent of Public Works. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Council Member Chapman. Can I vote on this? Yes. Yes. Council Member Clayton. Yes. Council Member Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. On to introductions, ordinances. Ordinance 2017-36, a capital ordinance appropriating the sum of $42,400 for acquisition of a speed trailer for the police department, various tools and equipment for the mechanics within the Department of Public Works, and various tools and equipment for the fire department. Can I have a motion to introduce this ordinance, please? Move, Move it. it. Second. 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 Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing for this ordinance will be held on September 13, 2017. We're on to second hearing, ordinance 2000, or public hearing, I'm sorry. Ordinance 2017-35, authorizing the city of Asbury Park to convey an easement over certain portions of public right-of-way area adjacent to property located at 1003 Bond Street, Block 2703, Lot 2, formerly known as Block 167, <coughs> Lot 1.02. Can I have a motion to open this ordinance up to the public, please? Move it. Second. Werner. Thank you. Hi. I know you've uh, discussed this in executive session at great length, and uh, you've listened to my comments uh, probably more than a month ago. Uh, my seat's on the agenda again, and I just uh, feel I really have to uh, put my two cents in again. Uh, first of all, this is an R2 zoning district. R2 zoning districts are historic districts. So I'm going to be addressing you as the city historian uh, regarding this. Um, I've commented to you as a body many, many times that the city's uh, rights of way are actually linear parklands. All of the avenues going east and west and they have large expanses of public right of way from the curb to the property line. And these are actually part of the historic character of Asbury Park. It's the look and feel that everybody's attracted to and really defines uh, how Asbury Park is experienced. So one of the very first designed communities uh, in the garden style. And uh, now you're giving away public property. And that has me greatly concerned. Now, just to be clear, I'm not anti-development. I am not against this development. I just have some serious concerns about how we got to this point where the city is selling an easement to a developer to use public property 
when the city ordinances and codes allow that use for nothing. So maybe you could tell me, first of all, how did, how did this come about? I know this is a very old application. How far back does this go? 2007. 2007. 2007, okay. And in that 2007 um, zoning approval, I guess it was, was this allowance of a parking lot on a public right of way, correct? The approval was subject to getting um, approval of the mayor and council for any encroachments Absolutely. on the city right of way. Absolutely, and rightfully, rightfully so, maybe. And I say maybe because if you look at other developments of this type, no, encro no encroachment permissions were ever given for developments of this type. And there's a reason for that, because the city code allows vehicular use of the space that we're talking about, provided it's paved so that you can turn cars around. Think of everybody's driveway. Everybody has a driveway going onto their property. Well, not everybody, but I let's say you have a drive my driveway. Let's say you have a driveway, okay? You're effectively using a public right of way to access your property. It's paved, so it makes it a legal uh, vehicular access point. You don't have an easement. Nobody gets easements to drive their car from the street to their property, right? It's perfectly normal to do this. There are developments all around, large apartment complexes that were built that have parking lots comparable to this that have paved areas where cars back into the paved area go in and out of the driveways. It's not any problem at all, and no easement is necessary to do that. What I find particularly troubling about this particular one is that there's a fence. And I think the fence is altering the intent of this beyond what the code allows, and that is to use it as a vehicular access for free you're charging uh, 20, uh, 28,000, is it? Yeah, well, 28,000 something dollars, right? One time fee to grant an easement. And I think that that's okay, you know, if you want to do that. But I really object to the fact there's a fence here because the fence confers privatization. It confers literally, this is my property on this side, and this is your property on the other side and it interferes with the landscape. Looking down the block from Main Street, now there's a fence. The, the area is fenced off. Everything beyond that is green open space. Everything ahead of that is green open space. It doesn't need to be fenced off to be usable as a parking lot, and I don't think the applicant has to spend that kind of money to do that. What are the alternatives? Well, I had mentioned many me, many weeks ago, I guess when this first came up, that if somebody had given this some forethought from a planning perspective, perhaps this public right of way could have been developed into diagonal parking for the exclusive use of those residents. Seems to be very popular now to having residential parking permits to park in front of your own house. Here's an opportunity where the city could have generated revenue f on a yearly basis from the residential parking permits if diagonal spaces had been put in there as opposed to a one-time fee of 28 something thousand dollars in perpetuity. So there's a lot of things with this that I don't think were really thought through completely. Number one, the codes of the city of Asbury Park and how they apply to parking and using um, public right of way for vehicular access and egress um, the alternatives in terms of the city using its powers to delineate how this property is used in the future for diagonal parking perhaps. So this all, I, you know, just wanted this all to be on the record and you to be aware of it because uh, it's contrarian, I understand, but this is how I view things. I think Giving away public property, selling off the rights to public property should be an absolute last resort in a hardship situation. If there are alternatives to doing that, they should be fully explored and used if possible. All right, so that's, uh, that's basically what I need to say. Um, 
One, one other thing, I, I made a note to myself here. Let me just figure out what the note means. Oh, okay. So, so you're giving an easement, all right? So the, the city is retaining the property, but the, the developer has the right to use it, okay? But he's putting a fence up, which is saying, okay, everybody else can down. That effectively privatizes it. Well, if you're gonna go that far, why not just vacate the property, add it to the applicant's property, and charge taxes on it forever? Doesn't that make more sense? So there you go. Motion to adopt ordinance 2017-35. Move it. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. I'd just like to remind everybody that the August 23rd meeting is canceled, so our next meeting after this is September 13th. Have All a great right. rest of the summer. Well, you you say motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Yes. Okay, here. September 13th.